Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here. Welcome back to The Division 2, and today I wanted to bring up a topic that I've given a lot of thought to over the past few weeks. It all revolves around the dev team's big initiative that they're working towards this season and with Year 6's philosophies overall, having to do with bridging some of the gap between new and longtime players of The Division 2. Now, for the record, I'm in support of the goal, especially in the context of where The Division 2 is at as a game five years into its life. However, as the title suggests, there is one big downside to this, I believe, and that is what I want to get into with this video. We're going to get into much greater detail on all of this, so let's waste no time and get right to it. But if you do end up enjoying the video and you want to see future discussions and news from The Division 2 like this, then I would appreciate you clicking that subscribe button, and let's go. Okay, so everything here really started with the one endgame change in feature that the game released with this latest major update and season for the game. If you're not sure what that is that I'm referring to, I did make a video highlighting the changes and demonstrating it all in game feel free to check that one out link in the upper corner and down in the description but the tldw was that the devs went in and changed what's required to reach the division 2's endgame and match up with the existing player population that resides there basically they lowered the physical cost of entry by only requiring you to own the base division 2 game as opposed to needing dlc as well and they made the process simpler in game by removing some old and complex legacy progression steps while also giving players the choice of where and how they progress towards the level cap of 40. All in all, as I've said in videos before, I'm all for this change. I know some have issues with it, they don't like the idea of people now not needing the content that we previously had to buy. I get that. I mean, we did need it to access all of this content for all of this time and had an exclusivity period with it for four years, but yeah. And look, I don't want to pretend that what they've done here is a perfect solution. We're going to get into that with this video's main focus, and it's also something that I want to touch on briefly at the end. But if we're looking at this realistically, The Division 2 is a five and a half year old game. And while it is popular beyond what I think many would be willing to admit, obviously it does not have the recognition nor player base sizes of a game like Destiny, for example. So with the goal being to make The Division 2 as fun and attractive as possible for the next few years while we wait for The Division 3 to be developed, I think it is a very smart and sensible plan to make the barrier of entry as low as possible for new players. At least to reasonable degrees when we're talking about these convoluted purchasing packs or hard to understand game systems. Just let people get in, play, and then join the rest of the player base to access the content that's available. However, as I've said, there is one big downside to that whole notion, one that I did a little digging on, and one that I know some of you had picked up on as well. And that's that has to do with the future of the Division 2 story and seasonal content in light of this one endgame change and the push to include everybody in the evolving endgame. One of the big aspects and touted advantages to one endgame, as the developers put it, was that by unlocking level 40 to everybody, that means that anyone can buy the Division 2, level up, and not only take part in each season's activities and events, but also play and follow along with the ongoing story. Now, I'm sure that part of their reasoning there is to widen the monetization potential, right? Get the premium season pass in front of more eyes. But I do also genuinely think that they care about people playing the story. It's been a big focus for them ever since the game resumed content with Season 9. And presumably, this is all leading somewhere far in the future to a transition and continuation into The Division 3's narrative. So, everyone can now play Seasons. However, because of the other big one endgame change, no longer does everyone have access to the lower Manhattan map, missions, and content. As they made it so that the Warlords of New York expansion is now an optional purchase. Again, in theory, I'm for that given the game's age, complexity, all of that. An expansion bloat is certainly an issue within this genre, <coughs> Destiny 2. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit more towards the end. But if people accessing and playing the seasons simultaneously cannot access New York, what does that mean for future seasons? Does it mean that none of the Manhunt content or League missions or anything can be located outside of Washington, D.C., which is the only map that base Division 2 owners have access Access to? What does that mean for the upcoming Brooklyn DLC that we're getting? That's going to add in the game's third major world and map to date. Can that not be used for any seasonal stuff either if it's not going to be a required purchase, which I assume that it won't be given everything they did this season with one endgame? Those are the questions and concerns that I began asking myself once we got the full scope of what one endgame was. But before jumping to any conclusions, I wanted to do some research and digging, right? Maybe there was a simple explanation I wasn't considering. Maybe they can or will go back and use Manhattan or Brooklyn for seasonal stuff, but people who don't own the content just get ported directly to those missions and then they can't roam around or go anywhere else. I feel like that would be a fair compromise, but I'm afraid that it seems like that might not be the case. Because this specific topic was actually addressed in the Seasons 
Gino FAQ that the team released a few weeks back. Now, this greater article should likely be mostly disregarded at this point, at least temporarily, as we know that the devs are rethinking everything having to do with seasonal characters, and that's a big portion of what this FAQ is dedicated to. However, it also contained a section specifically relevant to one endgame and the changes that we already have in the game now. And here was one of the questions asked, Will the New York map remain accessible for playing Legacy Manhunts? Players without ownership of Woni will not be able to access the Legacy Manhunt mission set in New York. If they attempt to fast travel to the Climax location, they will receive an in-game notification. Now, I don't want to conclude anything here, as this quote does not outright say all future seasonal content will be within DC, since non-expansion owners can't access the other maps. But you can kind of read in between the lines, right? The one Legacy Manhunt mission we have that's set specifically within Woni expansion content is Kelso's mission that released just last season. And like I said before, you'd think maybe for non-Woni owners, the game would let you fast travel to the Stranded Tanker specifically. You can't walk around, it would pull you right back if you tried to, and you can then play through that one specific instance of the mission. But, as the FAQ states, non-expansion owners simply will not be able to access it. And like I said, this is the crux of my concern and what slightly worries me about future seasonal content. Because of how much emphasis is being put on allowing all players to access seasonal content regardless of what additional content you own, I would think this suggests that to uphold that, it means that all future seasons, be it story beats, league selections, whatever, will only take place within DC or the off-site locations that were given for free like the Pentagon, Coney Island, etc. And while yes, that certainly limits the gameplay potential of seasons by cutting yourself off from certain portions of the game content to be reused, my bigger concern is actually with the narrative side of things. Now, on the one hand, there is a suspension of disbelief to be had here already. Is it really all that realistic that every major story event for the past four months in the game world's timeline has taken place specifically within the section of DC that we have access to, or the limited blocks of Lower Manhattan, or the scattered off-site locations? No, it's really not. But when you factor in how much work goes into creating new zones and new areas, you work with what you got and you make the story fit within it, I get that. However, if the story is now funneled exclusively into DC or the other free areas simply for the arbitrary reason of non-expansion owners can't access it, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Again, I'm all for opening up the game to more people, but if you're going to tell me that once we go and play the Brooklyn content in the upcoming DLC, that you never return there again for the story and from there on out all future threats are still back in DC, like I said, I just don't know how I feel about that. And so, that's mostly where I am right now. We don't have a direct quote from the dev saying we will never use expansion content for seasons again, but like we just went over, all signs seem to kind of point to that. And I just think that constricting a game like this one's narrative, not letting the story naturally go where it should go sometimes, just to ensure that it fits this retention strategy of allowing all players to access it, that would be a bit of a shame. The last thing I wanted to cover then was just discussing the logistics of it all. Okay, Rogue, you don't like them tying all the narrative to DC so that non expansion expansion owners can play, what's your alternative proposal then? Like I've said countless times already in this video, I see the value of encouraging new players to come aboard, I'm in full support of it. And like I mentioned Destiny 2 earlier, a huge problem that game has with getting new players to join is that it is maddening to try and understand what you need to purchase to play. Oh, you want to play the end game? Well then you just need the latest expansion. But if you want the best subclass for a lot of content, you should really get this expansion too. Also you probably want this one raid for this certain weapon, so you actually need this expansion too. You're talking about the one here from 2019? Yeah, yeah, that one. Alright, of course I'm exaggerating here a bit, but if not well thought out, live titles like The Division and Destiny can become very unfriendly from that outside perspective. I think one endgame makes The Division 2 more approachable at this stage in its life, which is good, but how do we fix the story issue? As I mentioned earlier, if there is a way to allow non-expansion owners to access just that one slice of seasonal content when necessary, I think that would solve the problem. However, if that's not technically possible, then maybe there's just not an elegant solution and you just keep seasonal content in locations where the story naturally leads it to be. And if that means that it's in content tied to an expansion, then you throw up a splash screen encouraging people who don't own it to buy it. Who knows, like I said earlier on, I'm sure at this point in The Division 2's life, none of this is likely a huge concern for the devs. But if nothing else, I think it is important that they start thinking about stuff like this for The Division 3. Assuming that game is built from the ground up for long-term support and content, which is certainly my hope, then create a good plan for having expansions that deliver meaningful, worthwhile content that the rest of the game can utilize accordingly, but also make sure that two, three, four years in, it's still feasible for new players to come in, understand what's what, and not be stuck navigating through half a decade of DLC to figure out what they need. Alright folks, well I think that wraps up the majority of what I wanted to talk about in today's video. Lots of positive aspects I think have and will continue to come from initiatives like One Endgame, and other efforts that the devs are making to continue having The Division 2 be accessible and easy to join onto this late in its life. 
but those don't come without their own costs and downsides. And for this one in particular that we went over with seasonal content and story, I think it's important to talk about. I would be very curious to get all of your guys' thoughts and reactions to this below. Do you see a similar concern like myself here when it comes to what content is planned on being used to be available to which players? Maybe you see it entirely different overall, or you don't think it's that big of an issue. As always, agree, disagree, wherever you land, I'd love to read it down below. But that's going to do it for me on this one, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Rogue Gold. Ow.